GM, and welcome back to our channel. Um, I'm sitting here with Erica live at East Denver. And yeah, Erica, thank you for coming on. GM, GM, hello. <laughs> yeah, the pleasure is ours. And we will talk about the gigantic blockchain week that is coming to Korea. Uh, not, It's not far away anymore. It's like just four or five weeks or so, right? One month, literally. I'm shaking right now. This is literally officially March and it's last week of March. So I'm just really excited, but nervous at the same time. Yeah. And it's um, in, com in contrast to East Denver. So in Denver, there's also like one and a half weeks of uh, events, but it's like one event. It's East Denver and we will talk about East Seoul. We will talk about a little Asia, Shifa Summit and lots of the other events that will go on. But before we do that, uh, could you kindly introduce yourself? What have you been doing so far in this space and so on? Sure. Uh, my name is Erica. I am the creator of Crypto Soul, now Crypto Planet. I'm trying to more diversify around the world. I've been in the space since 2017, hosting a lot of community meetups, uh, conferences, hackathons. So I'm the host of Biddle Asia Conference, Eat Soul, Biddle Vietnam, uh, and also Hack Adam Soul uh, back in the day. So I hosted three Hack Adam Souls um, at hackathons. And so I'm more of a conference organizer, but also a connector and uh, yeah, coordinator. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, lovely to hear. And I think let's start at the beginning because uh, Hack Atom was one of the is like one of the biggest OG events in the history of uh, Cosmos. Um, I believe also Kepler was uh, bootstrapped uh, back then. So can you talk a little bit about the historic relevance of the Absolutely. So I hosted the first Cosmos Korea meetup back in the day. And it was like it was surreal and cosmos korea has originally had a really good community and a very big one too so it was no problem to host meetups every month so we had speakers from like different projects but also korea innately had just good speakers and then when i started hosting hack out of the hackathon i got like uh, support from icf and stuff like that and one of the projects that was built out of Hack Adam Soul was Kepler, right? And 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 Josh was like coming back. Josh worked for me back in the day, uh, Dogemos. And so like I didn't I didn't know he had those like capabilities. I was so amazed by what he built. So I'm just like so proud of him up to this day. But amazing projects came out of um, Hack Adam Soul. A lot of amini amazing like attitude and also atmosphere came out of it. So I think it's been well known as like the uh, healthy hackathon based out of Soul. So I'm very proud of uh, what we've done over the years. Yeah, um hundred percent agree on that. And yeah, you mentioned Kepler, but there were like so many other projects that came out of this. Like we just uh, scratched the surface here. So yeah, to really lay the groundwork here. So Seoul is really one of the hotspots for the cosmos. So what teams are in Seoul? So maybe we can do some location check here. Oh yeah, uh, Cosmos Station is based out of um, so I mean Cosmos Station. Yeah, <laughs> and um, of course Kepler has a big office there. Um, also, what else? I mean, DSRV is definitely a good friend of Cosmos for sure. Um, I mean, Tara was based out of, <laughs> I mean, right? I mean, it was a big one uh, for sure uh, back in the day. I had a big office as well um, and good presence. And just basically a lot of like core contributors to the Cosmos, like um, uh, the core team, Tendermint was actually based in Seoul. So June was a who was a um, core contributor, a young contributor. He was based in Seoul. So um, many teams are definitely and potential teams are also based. Also. What what do you what, what do you know uh, in like based in Seoul? I, maybe I'm missing some. Um, yeah, I actually got a lot of alpha from Dodge. Um, so I assumed like a lot of Osmosis people are are there. So Josh uh, from Osmosis. Yeah, that definitely comes based there, but quite on. And uh, Bora, I mean, she she left, but she was based there in Korea as well. And she's one of the like really badass women. <laughs> I really love her, but uh, yeah, she's definitely a huge um, believer in Cosmos as well. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we know that, um, yeah, Seoul is not a new location for the Cosmos at all. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the Korea uh, about the that is ahead with Biddle Asia, with ESOS. Maybe you can go through the agenda of the week and yeah, what uh, what the highlights are. Sure. Um, so this, so I host Biddle Week uh, every year and this year has been a little early, late March. And so it starts off with Biddle Asia Conference. It's my fifth Biddle Asia Conference this year. Um, we have an amazing uh, talk coming <laughs> in person. <laughs> I want to emphasize that. Um, Ilya from Near, um, Zachy's coming. Um, also Brian Crane from ICF, um, Course One. He's all coming as the sponsor as well. 
um, Yelena uh, Noble is coming as well. You're coming as well. <laughs> um, and so a lot of like different protocols um, and founders are coming. And so that's a two-day conference and then starting off the entire week. And then there's Eat Soul happening right after. It's a hackathon. Um, and the location is interesting. It's so a gaming company called Nailwiz. So it's in the middle of a, a like a Korean Silicon Valley kind of sort. So it's like a startup friendly area called a lot of gaming companies like Kakao is based there, which is one of the big conglomerates, right? And so, yeah, we're a gaming company and uh, it's a, you know, it's eat focused hackathon. And then afterwards, there are a lot of, there's Chief I Soul Summit, which is like the, you know, empowering women. Uh, of course, men are welcome as well. But it's the first Chief I Soul Summit in Asia, which is very significant. So the founders are coming as well. Um, and also there's Adam Soul that's happening as well. I'm very excited to ho um, host that together um, and help that. And um, a lot of side events happening like ZK Day or there's a modular day. Um, I mean, Celestia is coming as well. So Nick will be <laughs> pulled into different um, events as well. But yeah, I'm just really excited about the side events as well. It's definitely builder focus as well. Um, so a lot of events are targeted towards like learning and kind of like, like, like learn, meeting the founders and um, getting, you know, us. Uh, getting stuff built right so it's mo mostly about that less about investment per se but yeah that's the entire biddle week <laughs> as i call it now that you mentioned um, i mean obviously at which is the equivalent to so like there are thousands of people in the city so how many people are coming to seoul and is it is so like more kind of a more familiar and more cozy environment where you're not experiencing a huge convention. So is this kind of the TLDR of what you can expect? Yes, exactly. So it's a more of a curated event. And so, I mean, I think good people attract good people. Um, that's what I believe in. And if you have the right intention and also the right projects involved, I really believe that there will be good people that's coming to, the, it doesn't matter about the quantity. It's more about the quality. And so like, it's a very unique experience in which you're not bombarded with like a lot of like thousands of people. It's more like, oh, well, this person can add value to my network, right? You can meet these like people. And I've heard so many testimonies from my previous events that they've gained some good network out of this. So yeah, it's definitely a more loose, like chill environment, but you can definitely concentrate on each event and kind of like get extract stuff out of it, right? It, either it be like employment opportunities, it could be like education opportunities, grant opportunities, right? Um, through hackathons and so forth. So yeah. Yeah, like very, very excited for it also, um, especially for, for Eve Soul, uh, will be one of my, I think my third hackathon I will be at. Um, and really, ETH, uh, Ethereum hackathons are really, really uh, the best. So really, really looking forward to that. Um, in regards to Seoul itself, Korea itself, so can you talk a little bit more about the Korean blockchain crypto community? And yeah, how, do you, how does the government view uh, crypto in Korea actually? Yeah, so South Korea has always been an interesting hub uh, in Asia. Um, it definitely has a very big retail market, right? And good, ex I mean, big exchanges like Upbit, Bitthumb, CoinOne. Um, so there are like really significant exchange and players there regarding trading and investment. Uh, also, there are some projects coming out of it for sure. I mean, a lot of validators as well, which is very surprising. And it's a really good same symbol, right? That the ecosystem's getting healthy. They're helping each other. And it's really supportive system. I mean, it's not as human us as like you know other countries some some countries but korea definitely has a tightly knit you know community also there are some research companies coming out of it as well um there's uh, four pillars that's been like on my radar as well and they're doing some significant research on like korean protocol oh korean and global protocols and they're writing in korean language so it's actually helpful for the local community to understand what's happening in um like significant projects out there um and also um i mean events are definitely popping up always <laughs> and so i think it's definitely lively um in general regulations part is a little bit more tricky right i think elections are coming up in south korea <laughs> which is a very like sensitive time for political parties and back in the day um when the rain I mean, current reigning party um uh, before they were like you know, uh, rooting for their party, right? They were pr putting out uh, pro crypto policies back in the day. And honestly, the execution has been that great, honestly. <laughs> but I think they're still putting it out there for their next uh, term. And also, the interesting part is the opposing parties also uh, putting out some pro, pro crypto policies. And they're trying to kind of be more crypto friendly um, and kind of not delaying, but kind of giving some room for 
more investment. You know what I mean? Like, so like crypto taxes are going to be in, in place by 2025. That's what people are expecting. But who knows? It could be <laughs> delayed again. Um, <laughs> and maybe Bitcoin spot ETF could be accepted in Korea. I, there are talks about it, right? And there are some congressmen who are actually really pro ETF. Um, and so like Hong Kong, for example, it could be uh, in the works. And so that's really interesting. I'm looking forward to it. But I mean, honestly, politics are a little bit flaky. So we'll see how that runs out. But yeah, I'm very excited. I mean, Korean landscape is definitely exciting, uh, interesting to see. And you should kind of come and see for yourself. <laughs> Yeah, sounds extremely exciting, and uh, especially that the government is kind of more, um, yeah, is uh, is kind of more welcoming uh, crypto technology instead of trying to shut it down. Is also like a very good sign that, unfortunately, we don't see everywhere in the in the world right now, especially in the US. But yeah, very cool to see. Um, generally, the region of Asia, you hear a lot of good things about it. Also, Defcon is coming uh, to Thailand uh, by the end of the year. So why is this whole region so booming right now, The uh, like Asia and Southeast Asia uh, specifically? Uh, that's a good question. So, I mean, we're in Denver now. <laughs> I don't want to be against the U.S., but I mean, honestly, the last year has been very, the U.S. policies have been very strict. And I think a lot of firms and players have been um, in disencouraged by this whole um, policy trend. So, I mean, as a retrospect, as a contrasting trend, like, like relatively looking into Asia, other regions that could, they could flourish in, for example, and do their activities more freely in. So I think Asia has relatively kind of popped up as the alternative region to kind of look into. And I think also like notable countries like Singapore, Hong Kong, have been always trying to facilitate policymaking and kind of start in the right direction, right? And although they could be a little strict in the beginning, I think they're in the right framework uh, process. So, for example, monetary um, like authorities of Singapore, for example, they're really like trying to. It's been years since they've been kind of having a very strict. I mean, solid policymaking. And so, right now, they're collaborating with like industry people to make discussions and kind of find the right balance, right? Um, and a lot of players are based in Singapore too now. Uh, also, Hong Kong is. I went there last year. It's definitely blooming um, with the money coming in and also a lot of investments coming in. So I think there are definitely eight, some countries in Asia, like Korea as well, and Japan too, very, um, I mean, they're rising each individually as like an um, area for investment or also like players to kind of flourish in. Also, Southeast Asian countries, uh, notably like Vietnam, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, there are many users, like gamers as well. And also they love to try it out. They're mobile friendly. They're very um, forward thinking as well. I mean, uh, compared to like their income, for example, they're very, um, they want to have like bounties. For them. They want to try out bounties. They want to try new things. And I think the young population is burgeoning as well. It's growing year by year. So it's a very good trend to see, population trend. Whereas like South like Korea and Japan are like <laughs> decreasing a lot. So population wise, I think Southeast Asia is definitely a promising market for more growth in the future. Yeah. Yeah, this um, this is also something that we see in several sectors, not only in in, in crypto, uh, that reflects uh, the growth of uh, Southeast Asia. So yeah, very very exciting. But uh, going back to Seoul, what is some alpha that you can share? Things that people like me who will travel to Korea and Seoul for the very first time in their life. What are some top notch restaurants, top notch things to try? What is like the, the biggest alpha? So I mean, I think from a Korean's perspective. When like foreign like friends come over, we want to treat them well. So our idea of treating well is like a you know Michelin star that kind of thing. But no, I don't think that's the thing. Korean barbecue all the way, <laughs> uh, pork, beef, whatever it takes, right? Um, the best Korean barbecue places. Uh, we're gonna borrow them like you know uh, for the entire uh, crowd. So like every day, Korean barbecue, karaoke, um, definitely is a big thing in Korea. And I, it's really good to walk around the city as well. Uh, it's very safe as well. So just like, you know, walking around until late night and people love it's just like seeing other crowds and just, you know, jumping from bar to bar. It's really fun um, and safe. So I really highly recommend that. And also in terms of transportation, Korea is really good at public transportation. So we're going to actually give out some cards like with uh, our sticker where we kind of like put some like $20 in so we can kind of help people to come out, uh, go around the city. Um, it really helps with subways, buses, even taxis. You can kind of tap into taxis as well. Mm. So <laughs> we're trying to make it more easier uh, for people to go around other than Uber, using Uber, right? You can use Uber, but still uh, there are other options as well. So just making sure that people are 
enjoying the city um, like our own way, which is like we just go around by taxi, uh, uh, by bus and by subway. So those things are just like fun to just enjoy. Also, there's some hip areas around Seoul to for shopping, for skincare. <laughs> A lot of people have asked me about skincare. Um, so I reserve like my own spa place for like, other girls, but it's a really nice venture to go and skincare is like number one in South Korea worldwide so please try it out <laughs> and actually what I would be interested in uh, how's the coffee culture are there like very good cafes as well oh yeah I mean very good cafes even to work in as well there are many cafes in Europe where you cannot bring your laptop and I was just so shocked <laughs> like usually you go to cafes in Korea mm, in Lisbon You go to cafes in Korea to actually work there, enjoy the vibe, have some good coffee. And there are many areas in Songsu area, which, um, yeah, it's a hip area of Seoul. But there's like amazing coffee shops and Koreans are very serious about coffee. They love coffee. Americano is like number one, like consumption rate, I think worldwide, honestly. And so you can definitely look for some coffee culture there. Um, and the decor is amazing, too. Like just like just seeing the interior, just like mind blowing. So uh, I highly recommend <laughs> yeah, lots of cool things we can look forward to in, in Seoul. Really sounds very, very appealing. Um, really can't wait to be in Seoul uh, in four weeks. So yeah, Erika, thank you so much for hosting the conference, for helping us with uh, Atom Seoul. Uh, thank you for participating in this and yeah, safe travels back home. See you in Seoul. Thank you so much. <laughs>